Hello, welcome back to another episode of Nobody Is Doing It Right, the podcast for those who are uncertain. My name is Kat. I am one of these perpetually uncertain people. I'm also your host. I'm a writer, digital creator, self-awareness guide, um, and I help people like me or people who are on the same journey as me find more clarity and alignment. Um, If you want to work with me, if you like the things I say or you find my topics interesting, you can book a one-to-one call with me. Um, If you don't like one-to-one calls, I offer um, audio recordings that'll be pre-recorded and sent to you. I also offer email guidance, Um, really whatever works for you, to be honest. I want to be able to help as many people as I can in a way that best serves them. Um, And that doesn't always mean one-to-one calls. So all of that can be found on my website, katerinaguides.com. And all the links are going to be in the show notes, of course. Um, But today's episode is kind of connected to what I do and my own journey, specifically when it comes to creativity. Um, And if anyone doesn't know, anyone who might be new here, who only started following my podcast in 2022, my podcast started as a creative podcast in 2020, because at the time I was only identifying as a writer. I wasn't branching out into any other area of creativity. I thought that that was all I should do, that I thought that was the only thing that, I don't know, that that felt okay for me to do. I didn't also think that I was good at any other kind of self-expression. I didn't think uh, verbal self-expression was my thing. So I just kind of like, you know, secluded myself to writing for a long time. And that podcast, when I started it, uh, was mostly about creativity. And this is kind of an episode like that. And I know a lot of people who follow me are also creatives in their own right. Um, And some of you aren't, but this doesn't only apply to creativity. It applies to any part of your life, right? And the topic for today's video is about how you should do the embarrassing or cringy thing that you're avoiding doing because it is on the other side of that embarrassment, on the other side of that cringe, where you are going to find yourself and really, you know, find your passion and be more purposeful and in more alignment when you do. Because ultimately, that feeling of cringe and embarrassment is not yours. It's somebody else's, right? If no one else was on this planet right now, you wouldn't feel cringy or embarrassed to do that thing that you really want to do. You're fearing the shame and embarrassment that other people are going to put on you, right? And to an extent, it makes sense, of course. We are social, communal creatures. We need to be accepted in order to feel safe and to survive. You know, biologically speaking, if we're doing things that are not approved of, we can be exiled. And to be exiled means to be kicked out of our society, out of our, you know, tribe, whatever, and left to fend for ourselves. So we don't want to risk that. Now, in today's day and age, uh, the situation is very different. Now, this isn't me advocating for people to do anything that hurts other people, that is uh, like blatantly offensive or just aggressive with bad intentions. No, that's not what we're talking about here, right? We're talking about the thing that you want to do that is for you that brings you joy, that is your little thing, and it has nothing to do with anybody else, really. Um, But you're still fearing the embarrassment and the cringe of someone witnessing you do it uh, because of what they will think about you, their judgment of you and what you want to do with your life, which does not affect anybody else. That's what we're talking about today. And of course, this applies to creatives. I myself for a long time held back on expressing myself, putting myself out there, letting myself be seen because of the fear of embarrassment and and like just cringe of like, oh, you're going to put yourself out there into the world and share your thoughts and ideas, almost in a way of like, who do you think you are that you think your opinion and perspective and creativity and all that is so important that other people need to hear it. But realistically, it is like that is the point of being human and being in community with people. The point is that, yes, you do have to share your opinion and your thoughts. Like that is that is the point of, of living, in my opinion, right? That's the point of, of existing with other humans is to share that stuff with one another. So I don't know how it's happened that we now think it's embarrassing to do that or it's shameful or, you know, keep your head down, keep your mouth shut, um, you know, because that doesn't serve anybody. It really is not serving any part of our existence to do that. And yet so many of us are ashamed to do that. And it applies to creativity. Um, So many artists out there are holding themselves back from doing their art and showing it to the world and just brazenly being like, yeah, I made this. 
and I think it's cool. What do you think about it? Also, it doesn't really matter what you think about it. I think it's good. If you like it, great. If you don't, don't. That's fine too, right? Um, but it applies to so many areas of your life. And that could be as simple as, you know, expressing something that you think or like about your just general existence, like how you want to live your life, where you want to live, the kind of space you want to live in, the the books you like to read, whatever. If that's cringy and embarrassing to, to you or for you to share, that's what you got to do, right? Whatever it is that, that inspires that feeling of embarrassment or cringe, that is a sign that that's exactly what you need to do in order to get to your authentic self. It's on the other side of that that your authenticity lies. And we're taught and encouraged to keep that authenticity at bay because being authentic means being different because everybody's obviously different. Um, and being different means not fitting in and not fitting in means challenging other people's perspectives and opinions of their own lives, right? Because ultimately when someone judges you for something that you're doing that's not hurting anybody else, it's not bothering anyone, it's just for you, uh, that's a reflection of their own beliefs about themselves and what they think they should do. Because ultimately if someone is secure in themselves and feels okay with the way they're living and the way they're expressing themselves, they're not gonna really care about you and the way you're expressing yourself. Again, if it's not hurting anybody else or anything like that, obviously. But they're not gonna care. They're gonna be like, oh, that's great. Yeah, because I do it for myself. So obviously I would want other people to do it too. I would want other people to also be authentic because I'm authentic. The people that are mad at you for being authentic are the people that aren't authentic themselves, that feel shameful or you know, embarrassed or whatever to show their authentic side. Um, those are the people ultimately that you shouldn't care about what they have to say about you, right? And I think this is something I talk about in my one-to-one -one calls a lot because people will ask me, or even in my TikTok lives, people will ask me like, how do you stop caring what other people think of you? And I know on the surface, it's like, it's so easy to say, uh, just stop caring, just stop caring. Like, you know, it's your life, you do you. But it's not that easy ultimately. The way I have worked on it for myself, the way I have reframed it so that I'm better at doing it and practicing this is by asking myself like, okay, who is this person that I am embarrassed of judging me? Who are they? And if they are somebody who does not at all align with who I want to be or how I want to live my life, if they are living a completely different life than the one I aspire to or like just want to cultivate for myself, why do I care? Why do I care? It doesn't make sense to care about what they think about me because who are they? Who are they to me, really? And at the end of the day, they are nobody to you because you don't know them and they don't know you. And that's not to say that we disregard people or, you know, like ignore the haters, they don't matter. You know, everybody matters, of course. But what I mean is to you and your life, you know, we only have a certain amount of time on this planet. We only have a certain amount of energy that we can expend in our day, especially for me. Like I'm somebody that does not have a lot of energy. And so I've had to learn as I've gotten older that I have to really be mindful of how I allocate that energy and who I give that energy to. And the people that you're worried about judging you, you're giving your energy to them. And they are really not important in your life specifically, right? They're important in their own right, obviously. But in your life, what exactly, what role or purpose do they actually have in your life in terms of what you're trying to achieve or like how you're trying to live? They don't have a purpose other than just being this like Greek chorus of shame and guilt to keep you down, right? So keep that in mind when you think about, okay, I want to do this thing, but it's embarrassing, it's cringy. Everybody out there has something that they are embarrassed or, or feel cringy about doing. Everybody has that. There are only a certain amount of people that are willing to take that step further and actually do it. And those people ultimately, because I am one of them as well, feel so much better once they do. They realize how, how silly it was for them to feel that way. You know, it is It is ultimately silly. Now, I know, you know, I'm not trying to invalidate the feeling in the moment because it's not an easy feeling. I was stuck in that feeling for a very long time. It can be debilitating to feel that embarrassment and shame of doing what you want to do, especially if you're raised in an environment that did not encourage you to do that throughout your life. Totally understandable. It's not easy to work through. But I'm here to tell you and give you that push if you're kind of on the, if you're teetering on the edge of it right now, you will feel better once you do. Yes, you will have people who sh who call you out and who try to shame you and try to embarrass you. But once you start doing that thing and you realize, okay, it actually feels good to, to fully express myself in this way, the things people say after a while actually don't hit as hard 
as you thought they would or as they might have initially hit when you were first starting this journey of self-expression. After a while, you're like, oh yeah, I don't actually care because they're not even being authentic with themselves, right? They're trying to tell me not to be authentic when they are hiding behind, you know, um, uh, you know, a username with numbers and, and you know, n- nothing to show who they actually are. So after a while, you kind of stop caring, right? And I find also, though, the hardest people to be authentic around is people that you actually know. There's something a little bit more difficult about your family, your actual friends or, you know, friends of friends or whatever seeing you show up. That can be actually, I think, a bit harder. Um, and that takes a bit more time to get comfortable with. It might not, for me, I still have a lot of difficulty with it. I'm not going to lie because these people actually know you, but the people that don't know you are seeing, you know, a sliver of who you are with what you're putting out there, right? They're they're seeing an aspect of you as a person. Um, it's still a valid part of you, obviously, but you're expressing only this part of you. So to them, if they're seeing it as cringy and embarrassing, it's not a reflection of you, right? Because again, they're only seeing one sliver of you. It's a reflection of them and what they feel about themselves because they don't know you. So their perception can only come from their one reference point, which is them, right? Um, So yeah, I think it's important to keep that in mind. Obviously, the people that are closer to you know all of you. So it does feel almost like they are, their opinion is all encompassing. But even then, even then, nothing anybody says is personal. It is always coming from their perspective and from what they think about themselves, how they are viewing the world. And how they view the world and you and anybody else is so different than how you view it or how somebody else views it. So whoever thinks, like one person might think you're really cringy and embarrassing and another person might see you as their hero, right? And those are the people that you are trying to actually reach. Those are the people that matter ultimately because they are they are your people. They are your, they are the reason that you're being called to this thing that's embarrassing and cringy, right? Not the people that are there to shame you. They're, you know, they're there because of course, you know, there's so many people out there with so many different perspectives, but they're not for you. They're not the people for you, right? The The reason you're being called to this embarrassing, cringy thing are the people that need to hear it, that value it when they hear it. And you won't know that those people exist until you start doing that thing. Right now, it's easier to just assume that everybody's going to think you're cringy and embarrassing, right? Until you get the evidence that some people won't. So put yourself out there do the cringy thing and notice how not cringy it actually is when people start validating you and resonating with what you say and what you do and how you show up. Then you realize after a while that, oh yeah, life and reality is literally different for everybody. Everybody sees everything differently. So who is to say that somebody else's opinion of you and your reality is more valid than your opinion of it and how you want to live it, right? But you won't you won't kind of get to that awareness of it until you you push yourself through that discomfort. Um, the only way out is through ultimately. And again, it's not easy. It takes time. But if you're on the precipice of it right now and you're listening to this podcast, I'm here to encourage you to just do that thing. Do that cringy and embarrassing thing and allow yourself to kind of revel in the cringe and embarrassment, right? Because it, it, it's going to happen. You're going to feel that feeling anyway. If you're trying to avoid the feeling of cringe and embarrassment, by not posting things, just know that, yes, you're going to feel it. Feeling it is inevitable. It is what it is, right? And I think when you allow yourself to just accept that, okay, I'm going to feel this feeling, it makes it easier to actually take that step. Because when you do feel it, you're like, okay, I was expecting this, so whatever. But then you're also seeing all the positives as well. You're letting the positives come in. You're not just trying to keep the negatives at bay because you're allowing them to exist. Because of course they do. The good always has to come with bad and vice versa, right? That's the balance of the universe. So yeah, I hope this was encouraging for anyone who is on this journey of just authenticity, self-expression in whatever way, whether that's through your creativity, your career, your relationships, just anything that you feel is so embarrassing to, to just show to people or to let people see about you, do it. Because that's exactly what you need to do to get in touch and in tune with yourself. It's a sign from your inner self and your maybe your higher self that this is it. Like, this is who we are. This is who we are right now. Because, of course, we, we're always changing, right? Who you are right now is not going to be who you are in you know a year or two. But your higher self is telling you, this is who we are. And this is why you feel so strongly about this thing. Because it's going to take you one step closer to your authentic self. It's that really, you know steep step on a flight of stairs that is going to take a lot of thigh muscle power (laughs) to get you up there 
yes, it's uncomfortable. It's going to feel bad. Um, but in this example, you, you have to do it to just get to that next level. You have to just muster up the, the courage, the bravery, and the acceptance, because that's a big part of it, accepting that you're going to feel that discomfort and allowing it to just pass through because the discomfort is not who you are. These are all passing thoughts. They're all passing ideas and you do not have to identify with them. So yes, you will feel cringe, you'll feel embarrassed, but that doesn't mean you're an embarrassing person. You don't have to identify with all of your feelings and all of your thoughts. They're not you. A lot of those thoughts are put in our heads by other people who feel certain ways about themselves and think that other people should also feel those ways about themselves, right? Most of the thoughts that you have, if you aren't, you know, m more aware of them or you're, you're just starting out on this journey, are not your thoughts, <laughs> right? And I know that's kind of um, weird for people to hear if they haven't uh, done this kind of self-awareness work. But when you realize that, that most of the thoughts that pop into your head are not yours or that you truly don't have to identify with them. Like if you don't want to identify with that thought, you don't have to. You are the observer of your thoughts. You're the one seeing it pass. And you can choose to let it go or you can choose to accept it and, you know, hold yourself back forever. But I think ultimately the best option is letting it go and accepting that, yeah, I felt it. It didn't feel great, but I'm letting it go because I know there are good feelings as well that are going to pass through me and I want to experience those. So yeah, I hope this was encouraging. I hope if you are on the precipice of this, that this gave you that, that necessary push to just do it, you know, just do it. It'll be very relieving once you do. It'll break the seal. It'll get you one step closer to feeling comfortable to do it more and more. And then when you start doing it more and more and create consistency, you'll feel so much better about yourself ultimately. It'll build that self-trust. It'll build the self-worth you need to feel okay and capable and that you have your own back. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, if you could leave a review, a like, um, also feel free to follow me on my other social media accounts, uh, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, all Katerina Guides. Um, all the links are going to be in the show notes below. And again, if you want to work with me, if you want to explore these topics in more detail, if you want my pers personal perspective and opinion on this, because again, I'm not a therapist or anything like that. I'm just somebody who's gone through this journey myself, who um, takes a lot of notes on it and really tries to help anybody else who's on it because I wish I had someone like me at the time when I was going through it as I'm learning this stuff now. So yeah, feel free to book a one-to-one -one call with me or anything that serves you and your journey. But I will be back again next week with another episode. 